Hello reader. Thank you for joining us. This is the Christian Readers Community Podcast. On this podcast, we will be discussing with fellow readers and authors. You will never lack for good conversations and recommendations of Christian books. If you're a lover of literary works, fiction and non-fiction, then you have made the right stop here. Thank you for joining us again, and I hope you listen to every podcast that we get up to tell for you. Thank you. Dr. Tony Cooper is a psychologist, author, and public speaker. Since 1986, she has been teaching adults the strategies to grow emotionally, build healthy relationships, heal from trauma, and experience God at a deeper level. Tony's mission is to help people find the courage, confidence, and comfort they need through a deeper bond with Jesus Christ. She has served as a college instructor, conference speaker, and teacher of continuing education for mental health professionals. She's the author of seven books that help people hear the voice of the Lord, correct distortions in their thinking, build confidence in how to study the Bible, and break into the blessings of God. Dr. Cooper is in private practice in Ohio and enjoys pickleball, hiking, and ballroom dancing. Hello, everyone, and welcome or welcome back to the Christian Readers community. I'm Faith, and I'm here with Dr. Tony Cooper. Welcome to the show, Dr. Tony Cooper. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yeah, so I read this beautiful book you wrote. You know, I've read so many books on self-help, but yours is one of those books that... Do, did not just um, it did not just motivate or inspire but it gave actionable it was very informative and it gave actionable steps that's things to do so you didn't just you know just inspire the reader but you told you gave the reader actionable steps to take to carry out and overcome that particular situation but before we go into that let's talk about your youtube channel just in case just for everyone who is listening right now tell us the name of your youtube channel and what it's all about okay so my youtube channel i named it after myself that's not very clever it's called dr (laughs) tony dr tony cooper And I have, I think, over 100 videos now. And most of them are less, well, they're all less than 20 minutes, I think. And they're videos on coping. So I put together like step by step, if you have trouble with perfectionism, if you have trouble with self-criticism, if you procrastinate, I put together the things you need to understand about yourself that will help you change and then step by step ways that you can do that. So I've been a psychologist and I've worked with people for decades. So I just sort of put in simple steps. Hey, this is how you do it. Why I wanted us to start this way is so that anyone listening to us, by the time you're done listening to this, say you are unable to get this book for whatever reason, you can go to her YouTube channel and subscribe to it so that you'll be able to get some because um, some of the things she some of the things she wrote in her book are actually on her YouTube channel. She did a video about those topics and they are very very informative and the book has so many actionable steps that you can take so without wasting much time let's go let's dive in and talk about your book anxiety depression helplessness then the subtopic or subtitle is keys to get free right keys to break free keys to break free yeah keys to break free so please um tell us about the book okay so uh one of the things that i've noticed year after year working with people is that 
Many people want to change, but they don't know how. And I just started to notice different things that cause people to get stuck, that even as believers, people of faith, that they have trouble accessing their faith. They have trouble kind of overcoming uh, depression. They get bogged down in anxiety. But especially there is a concept called learned helplessness. And I really got fascinated by that concept of learned helplessness. And I found that as I explained it to people, it really sort of helped the lights to come on and they could start to many times take steps forward again. So can I explain what learned helplessness is? Please go ahead. Okay. So one of the best ways to explain learned helplessness is to give an example. And this is not a diagnosis, but it's more of a phenomenon. So if you know anything about the way that baby elephants are trained for the circus, the way that they do it is they tie that baby elephant's leg to a tree or to a pole or something that won't move. So that every time that baby elephant tries to move, it's pulled back. And so it learns after a while, there's no use trying. You just stay where you are and that's it. So then by the time an elephant becomes an adult that weighs thousands of pounds, you can keep that adult in one place just by a rope around the leg. It doesn't even have to be tied to anything. So what this tells us is that even if you believe and have very strong faith in God, and even if you have very strong faith for other people, that if too many things happen to you too early in life, or if too many things happen all at once later in life, We can get sort of stuck where we stop having hope that things can be different. So that is kind of the basis for the book. There's a point you made. You made lots of points, but let's talk about this particular one first. You said maybe it's not bad to be selfish sometimes. When you talk about being selfish and being a Christian. Okay. Okay. Because... Because we know that yes. um, Christianity is all about sacrifice, sacrifice, putting others first before you. A good example is, of course, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So tell us about when you talked about, I mean, what do you mean when you, when you tell a child of God, a Christian, to be selfish sometimes? Well, the the way I look at it isn't so much as selfish as self-care. That women especially neglect self-care and they think that that's what God wants for them. Um, So if we look at Jesus, he would go to Mary and Martha and Lazarus's house. And as far as I can tell, a lot of times he went there to eat and to relax and to be with his friends. As far as I can tell, he wasn't necessarily healing anybody or teaching or he was just being human. And we know that because when Martha complained that Mary wasn't helping her, he said, basically, leave her alone. (laughs) So Mm. it was... It was good for them to sit and relax. Another example is if you look at the book of Genesis, where God created the earth in six days, and on the seventh day he rested. I don't think God was tired. So our example is there is time for work and there is time for rest. And then also, if you look at the life of Jesus, there were times that he sent his disciples away and he went off by himself. Now, a lot of that time was to pray, but it was also he was giving, 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 and 
Jesus was God, but he also was in a human body. And human bodies have to be, they have to get sleep, they have to get food, they have to get water. So if we are not balanced in taking care of ourselves, not selfish, but if we don't take care of ourselves, sooner or later, our stress will cause us to get sick or our lack of sleep and our lack of relaxation, our bodies will wear out. And again, we're more likely to get sick. So there is a balance. God created us spirit, soul, and body. And that's something I talk about in the book that we know to develop our spiritual life and our souls are our relationships. But if we are not taking care of all three dimensions, because he gave us all three dimensions, if we are out of balance, if our appetites control us, if our relationships control us, then we will not be in balance. We will not be listening to the Holy Spirit. We will go from crisis to crisis. If we die young, then we can't really serve God or people if we have worn our bodies out and and we're we're too ill, we're too tired, we're too stressed. So it's it's really a balancing act. And it's really not good for other people who are close to us. It's not good for them if we are always doing for them. It sort of teaches them to be selfish. And it teaches them that not to look to God, but it teaches them to look to us. So it's a matter of balance, but this is a mistake women especially make. Wow. Let's talk about, you know, another relatable topic, another related topic to this one, self-deprivation. Like you, you praise others. You're very kind to others, but you're very critical of yourself. Any little mistake you make, you know, you, you spoke about it in your book. Yeah. Some people would some people will say that it's important for them to be like that because, because it helps them keep themselves in line, keep themselves in check. So tell us what's the disadvantage and the danger of living such a life? So for me, that is more, it's borderline like perfectionism. Um, Some people think it's humility, but that's not my understanding. If we are self-critical, then again, our focus is self. If we are not able to enjoy the strengths that we have developed or enjoy the strengths that God has given us, then C.S. Lewis called that a false humility. It's not, it's not a balanced view of ourselves. And I don't think we're going to have much joy if we live in too much self-criticism. Now, we should be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And I know for me, when I'm getting a bad attitude, when I say something I'm not supposed to, I feel the Holy Spirit, you know, saying, uh, uh, uh. And then I need to like, okay, repent of that or stop what I'm about to say. So it's the Holy Spirit that keeps us in check. It is not our own self-criticism. And many times self-criticism comes out of some kind of rejection earlier in life. So how does being positive about yourself, about people around you, how does it help well, I think we have more joy. If we are if we're living in a state of gratitude in terms of what God has done for us, if we are looking for the positive in other people, and if we are thankful for, you know, the things going on in our lives and we're not unduly focused on what's wrong with us. The the Holy Spirit is faithful to help us keep growing. If we're reading the word of God, the word of God is going to prick your heart when you know this is, you know, this is a bad attitude I have. This is something the Lord doesn't want me to do. He will keep moving us towards glory to glory, it says in 2 Corinthians. He moves us from strength to strength. We will be more joyful. 
people will be drawn to us because the presence of God is more obvious. Whereas when we are focused on pushing ourselves down, then again, the focus is self and we are not being driven by the Holy Spirit. We are not driven by our spirit. We're being controlled by our intellect or by our emotions. Your biography says that you are a psychologist and an author and a public speaker. So how much of an experience did you draw from your work when you were writing this book? Um, it's. I would have to say, to be completely honest, that there's this intertwining of the things that God has had to work on in me with the things that I have studied, with the the experience I've had helping people get out of, you know, problems, to get out of the holes, you know, to help them escape from the pit, whatever the pit is for them, that it's been, it's, it's, it's a tapestry that God has created for me. So some of it is things I've had to do myself. Some of it is things that I have learned. This seems to help lots of people. And um, things I've studied, trying to figure out, you know, like, why does this happen? Why is this a problem? Or ask, sometimes the Lord just gives me a strategy. Like, I'll, I'll just wake up with an idea. Maybe some of you are like that too, where you get inspired. You wake up with this is how I'm going to do that, or this is how I'm going to write this chapter. That I, I really felt like each of the books I've written, I have felt like they were an assignment from God. And I have my own podcast, and every episode I've done, I believe, the Lord, I felt directed by the Lord, this needs, people need to hear about this. And then I, I've had so many years of experience that I have lots of files and Things or I've been studying the Word of God since I became a Christian um, when I was a teenager. So that's a lot of years. I won't say how old I am. And so there, there's <laughs> as 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 we deposit things in, in our well, as we read the Word of God, as we pray, as we get to know Jesus as our friend, that over time in our life experiences, the well can become very deep and very rich. And if we keep confessing the things that we know aren't good, that um, they aren't pleasing to God, they aren't good for us, they aren't good for other people, he keeps cleaning out that well. And then we have water to give to other people. On a daily basis, people suffer from depression, stress, anxiety, mental, all sort of mental health issues. This happens on a daily basis. So talk, tell us about your podcast, your YouTube channel, what you discuss, what people are to expect when they you know, search for your podcast on um, all major platforms or YouTube. Uh, so I, I already talked about my YouTube channel. It's named after me, Dr. Tony Cooper. And then the Lord directed me to start a podcast at the end of 2021. I had no desire to do a podcast. I didn't even know how to do one. But um, what I've been putting into the podcast is more of the spiritual principles like I've been talking about today. The YouTube channel is more on coping skills and the podcast, which I've called Life Without Baggage is more on incorporating spiritual principles into growth. So I I am just getting ready to start a very short series on soul ties, trauma bonds, and attachments. So I'll be talking about what a soul tie is, whether it's good or bad, what the Bible says about it, and how to break one if you know there's one that's a problem. So this is someone who has been doing this for several decades and I'm sure that you know you 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 you're in you're in the right hands if you decide to listen to what 
she'll be what she puts out on her youtube channel so besides your youtube channel and your podcast if someone wants to get in touch or check out some other resources from you where would they go or how would they do, be able to do that well if you go to my website drtonycooper.com tony is t-o-n-i and cooper is c-o-o-p-e-r if you go to my website it will show you the links to my videos to my podcast to my books i have a blog um i have a blog with about a dozen different topics and prayers of things that come up all the time um i just posted one on how to survive a breakup uh different things that help people who have just gone through a breakup so it's like like you said, Faith, thank you. I try to keep it very, very practical. This has been a nice and a beautiful conversation with you. And I hope that when I invite you next time, you'd be willing to come again. Oh, Dr. I would love Kupa. to do that. I would love to do that, Faith. Thank you so much. And I love the music that goes with your podcast. Oh, <laughs> It's, <laughs> thank you thank you so much it's just a background sound <laughs> it's so like thank fun you. though it makes it fun <laughs> yeah I, actually the first time I started recording I listened to it and I listened to it without the background song while I was editing it and it was like oof I could sleep off while listening to this so I just thought well let's give it something <laughs> So that was the reason for the background song. <laughs> but thank you so much. Thank oh, you welcome. for I'm glad. <laughs> thank you. I really enjoyed this. Yeah, me too. Me too. And I really hope to have you back here um sometime soon. Very that would soon. be great. That would be great. I have other books I can talk about, so Sure, sure, sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Cooper. And uh, everyone, thank you. I do hope you've enjoyed this as much as I did. And if you did, feel free to reach out to Dr. Tony. Until I come your way again next time, I'm saying stay safe, stay blessed, and bye-bye, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>